Um, I think one of my big accomplishments throughout my transition is that if you Google my name in Google Images, photos of me in my underwear come up. Um, so I'm really proud of that. That's a, a big achievement. So I'm going to read from Passage, which is um, my second collection of poetry. And uh, in the front section of the book, there's a lot of pieces that my editor liked to call my camping poems. Um, because she said whenever she read them, she just had this image of me out camping. And she's like, that's weird, because I don't really think you camp. You don't seem like an outdoorsy kind of girl. Um, but I am, actually. I'm, I'm very good at that. I know how to chop firewood. I can start fires really easily. I know how to skin animals. Um, these are not useful things in downtown Toronto. But I like that I know them, you know, just in case the apocalypse happens, which seems to be coming closer and closer every day. Um, so this is a piece called Lake Water. Along the shoreline, water waits in evening light, a weight in the world that holds the dark as I do my coat, close-knit, cold. The lake is immense, gathered by time, rainfall, the distant passage of glaciers to rest against the northern sky, though I know it moves from Hudson's Bay to Superior. At night, it's oppressive, beside me like a stranger, alien and sovereign and secret, gives life in one muted hand, fish, mussels, wild rice. The other offers death, drowning, snake bite, the rapids. So I'm uncertain what to say tonight or tomorrow morning when I greet it as I pass through on my journey home. I remember a poet saying that water carries sound, as if it knows how to amplify the movement of all living things, as if it knows how to speak the model tongues of the dead. This doesn't comfort me. Alone, my entire existence about this single element, my lungs are permeable and I'm a bad swimmer. I put tobacco down. Pray for water's mercy. May the river run to source so I can travel safe across the glacial flood plan to land on another shore but I don't believe in kindness. I know enough of drowning to see that only fire kills, oxygen-starved cells burning in the lining of your veins. Water is just the absence of air. It's nothing by itself but departure and suspension, a portal to a world unknown by human hands, a repository of our discarded offerings, plastic bottles, warships, lost ore from mines. This is a small comfort to me. Knowing the water offers me whatever I bring to it, a sleeping bag, a knapsack, my old grief as ballast, and it takes no more than the weight of me, moving by dawn over lakes in a canoe, timid but certain to be fixed on north like a compass, as far from the earth and sky as time can carry me. So as you can see, very, very Canadiana. You know, very, very camping. Joseph Boyden would be proud. Um, he wouldn't be, he knows me. We've had fun on Twitter. Um, <laughs> not good fun. Uh, this poem, I actually really like this poem. Sometimes when you do readings, you get to read random things that you wouldn't get to read otherwise, and that's what I'm using you for right now. Um, I'm also continuing my annual tradition of doing a poetry reading on Valentine's Day, which is a really sad reflection of my life, but you're all here with me now, so it's also a sad reflection of your life. So I feel better about that. We're sharing, we're sharing that moment. I really hope that this stops happening. I would like to break this annual tradition at some point. Um, so this poem, Waking, and one of the things about estrogen that when you go on it, no one told me this. Estrogen's a crazy drug, by the way. Some people in the audience probably know this, but um, you're not quite prepared for it when you start. And one of the crazy side effects that I had that I didn't find anywhere was dreams. So estrogen gives you crazy, crazy dreams, really vivid, really intense, and about the strangest things. And it was one of the first side effects from estrogen that I had, which was my sleep completely changed, and I started having all these nuts dreams. And lately, I've just been having these constant dreams about my dead dog, um, these really vivid dreams about my dog coming and visiting me. And I wake up every morning, and then I start texting all my other trans friends, being like, did estrogen, sorry? That's good. It's probably the estrogen. Yeah. I I, th I think there's a connection. <laughs> I really do. Um, anyways, this is a poem about... <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, this is a poem about 
kind of those estrogen dreams. Waking. I dream of the old house, dusk on the pines, fireflies glinting through the low brush, and birds. I can't say what kind calling out the last noise of the day. It's late summer in the dream. I know by the earth's heat, the banked sunlight diffusing beneath my feet, but faded, maybe August, frost in the air. Across the dark, the tree line waits for me, low and steeped in shadow, a shaded green by the yard's end, the footpath to the river visible, but only just. I think I hear my mother, not speaking, but somehow a sound of her in the wind, an echo I haven't heard in years, but recall, and I'm scared to find her. I stand at the bottom of the hill, beneath the house and the yard, and watch for explanations, signs or omens to arrive, justify dreaming. But there's nothing more, just late summer, my old home, the land slipping from light, and my mother, lost to me, but still singing with the birds, the last sounds I hear before waking. And because it's Valentine's Day, I will read a poem about my divorce. Um, <laughs> it's fitting, right? We were together for five years from 20 to 26, 25, 26. And that's such a weird time in your life. And it was such an intense relationship. And I think I probably learned a lot from it. At some point, I will feel not bitter about it, I think, maybe in my 40s. Um, but uh, one of the things that I found really interesting about it was it was the first time that I learned what it was t to fall out of love with someone. And I thought that falling out of love would be sort of dramatic in a way, but it wasn't. It's very quiet and gradual and it just keeps happening until one day uh, you realize, I don't love this person anymore. I don't know if they love me and I don't know what the hell we're going to do. Um, and so this poem is about, partly about reflecting on that moment of realizing, oh, I'm not in love with you anymore. Nightfall. No one looks for me by nightfall. I may camp, but does it count if the only witness is a murder of crows laughing in their spruce house? I used to dream of aloneness, back when the divorce wasn't sure and I spent every night shifting his sleeping body beside me. This quiet dark is not busy, Solitary lines of shadow grow, but they don't hold me. Still, it's not peace. Distance looms in the space between the sky and my flashlight, the small circle of my tent as full of longing as our old house. How funny the heart is, an animal in me that wants whatever the wind brings it, to hunt, nest, or die. But tonight I know different. Count the stars, an infinite sprawl that seems to span the Great Lakes in cold light, a marker of how far I've come from him and how close to me he remains. And I think I, for me it's that moment of, of falling out of love was, which was laying beside him at night trying to go to sleep being like, oh wait a minute, <laughs> something's wrong. What, what do we do now? Then we just did that for a year. Then we finally gave up, and he moved to Calgary. I think he's happy now. He's in law school. Is anyone happy in law school? I don't know. <laughs> I think that. I think that. Yeah, I think that was his punishment. Yeah, it was like, it was. It is. It is. I hope he suffers. Um, <laughs> no, he was a nice guy. Actually, I, when I this book was finished, I sent it to him because there's obviously there's poetry about him in it, and I was like you know, there's some poems in here about us, and I don't use your name, but like people will know, so are you okay with this, you know, that kind of thing. And he was really sweet. He, he just like was like, I'll read it, but I just trust you, whatever, whatever you want. Um, and then he gave it to his mom, which I thought was the weird, the weird thing. I was like, wait, do you, you want to give this to Jane? You're going to give this to your mom? You, did, did you read this? You know what's in here? Okay, okay. Um, and then he asked me for another copy because he wanted to give it to his girlfriend. And I was like, well, <laughs> I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you because you're in Calgary. You could have went back into that closet and you didn't. I don't know if it's better now that I'm a woman, but I don't know. But also really weird that you're giving it to your girlfriend and really weird that she wants to read it. I guess you have a good relationship. I don't know. It's not my fault if they break up because of this book. Um, anyway, sorry, I got off track there. Again, estrogen also makes me ramble. Um, Another poem that I really like from this collection, actually, which I think really fits today, um, is Blue. And I don't know why, 
but for some reason I wanted to write a eulogy for myself. Um, probably because I'm a poet. <laughs> and poets generally, you know, we're a little, we're a little morbid. Um, so I wrote a eulogy for myself and I actually, there's instructions in this book and that I've, I've shared with friends, if I die, um, make sure you read this at my funeral. So I'm going to read you my eulogy. Everyone good with that? Yeah, it could be tonight. It's snowy out there. It's Ottawa. I think I'm in a sketchy hotel. You never know. Uh, blue. First things first. The blue is infinite. It began in me when I was born. My first room, my wide eyes, the color of sleep, my animal circus comforter, a roving skyline, my town's default setting. Everything I know is blue's imaginings. Not easy, not restful, the color of deep space, winter's light to dusk, bruises on my back, melodious and searching, a byproduct of distillation. It is not real, not like the rest, arriving from abstraction and apparition of light. It only reveals absence, chance interplay of molecules. This is why it exists beyond my calculations, why I love it more than the light or dark. When I die, let it be my incandescent shroud. Coat me in tap water, open the windows to daybreak, watch the infinite blue evaporate from me, damp residue on a glass disappearing from sight like frost on the tree line, a passing shine on dullness. Everything the blue is, temporary and unreadable. You only see it when it's leaving. You cannot follow to blue's source, heaven, an underground spring, a galactic wreath of starlight. It will return, diffuse and changed in another illuminated moment, a new shadow on the floor. The same for me. My birth and death begin and end with blue, its transient shade. So first, first things first, then last things last. Mourn me as you would the color of this present sky. A blue light beyond you faded to never appear twice. Yeah, I know it's right. You read a, read your own eulogy, but I think that's better than letting other people do it. They probably look at my Instagram and be like, okay, I know what I'm going to say. Gwen had low standards. Um, <laughs> it would be true, but no one should, no one should know that. Um, and then I think... This actually, I think, I don't know how I'm doing for time, but I think this will be my last piece. Are we still good? Yeah? Everyone's looking around blankly. I don't, Nina was nodding, so I'm good with that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm only reading the, like, non-racy poems from this collection, and there's a very limited number of those, so. It's Valentine's Day. Yeah, I'm not reading any, any actual love poetry. My divorce poetry is as much as you're going to get from me. Um, I actually really like this piece. Uh, it's called A Good Medicine Song, which probably doesn't make a lot of sense to people without any cultural context. Um, so, I mean, in Anishinaabe, Anishinaabe culture, um, how we pray, I, anyway, before Catholicism and, and residential schools and all that stuff, how we pray is through singing, usually. And so a lot of the old people that I worked with, and a lot of the traditional people, when they prayed, they would just sing. And, um, and not necessarily even sing a certain song, or, or like it's not like hymns or anything like that. Uh, it was just their way of kind of connecting with the universe. And so as a poet, I try to reflect that in, in my poetry and approach the poetry as if it's an extension of that kind of tradition. And so this piece particularly is, is a part of that. And I like this piece because it's, it's me being a little bit Frank O'Hara, which is being conversational in stream of consciousness, not as good as Frank O'Hara and not full of weird art references that no one understands, uh, like Frank O'Hara, but um, it's my version of that. Am I over explaining the poem? Yeah, someone gonna nod? No, okay. You can't say anything to me anyway, I'm trans, so. If you do, it's a hate crime. I, I use that line a lot. It works. A good medicine song. Another day alone, halfway to heaven in a strange city, home but not at peace. I wonder about my life, the groove of my mind like a spring willow bank, mud, roots, and shoots. I barter probabilities like rough crows cawing at the coming night, treetop vigil on a flat horizon. Will I escape violence? 
The kid in me kicks at everything hard, back the fuck up anger. Worn thin at the edges where dawn rubs in, it's tenacious, ooh, I can't say that word properly, Ten tenacious? Yeah, thank you. It's tenacious light, bringing a rare calm, which doesn't soften me, though beauty tries to soak the calluses in emphatic milk. I'd like to be gentle, mellow the harshness of my bones and lie, melt to calcify jelly, be graceful in the low brush, a deer stalking the infinite, but I'm brash, trillium white amidst the hidden green. That's the way of abuse, I guess, how it leaves you walking down gravel roads to empty spaces, your life a map of graveyards, battlefields where you died and resurrection stones upturned. I think I'd like something to happen, unlooked for and wondrous, meteor showers in June, a boy who stays, but I can't count on it. Just this half-life of days across the reverend land, boots wet, jeans dusted up, nothing before me, everything behind, my hands bare, my soul a stone. And I think that's it for me. And I also don't take questions. <laughs> I super don't take questions. Thanks.